primitive roots and tables of indices. In the last video, you learned what primitive roots were and how to find them. And now we want to define the index of A to the base R modulo M. And it's denoted in this way. So pause the video for a minute and read the definition. So if I ask you, for example, for the index of 4, base 2, modulo 11, I'm saying, what power do I have to raise 2 to to get 4? Okay, so index is an exponent. It's the exponent that you need to raise the root to to get the value. So we know that 2 squared is congruent to 4 mod 11. So the index of 4 with base 2 is 2. It's the power that you raise 2 to to get 4. So example, m is 7, and we know that 3 is a primitive root modulo 7. And we're going to fill in a table of indices. To do that, we want to raise 3 to the first power and reduce it, mod 7. We want to raise 3 to the second power, mod 7. That's 9, and it reduces to 2. 3 cubed, so we're going to raise it to every power, up to 6. 3 cubed is 27, mod 7, which has remainder 6, mod 7. 3 to the 4th, we could say it's 81, or we could multiply the 6 from 3 cubed by 3, and then we'd get 18, which reduces to 4, mod 7. 3 to the 5th is going to be 3 times 3 to the 4th. That's the easiest way to do it. So it's 12, reducing to 5, mod 7. And 3 to the 6th, finally, we know actually this is 1, since 3 is a primitive root, mod 7. But it's also 3 times 3 to the 5th. So 3 times the 5 is 15, which has remainder 1 when you divide by 7. So it reduces to 1. Okay, so now let's fill in the table. The first value I want to fill in here is the index of 1. So that's saying, what power do I have to raise 3 to to get 1? That's right here, right? 3 to the 6 is 1, so 6 is the power. Next, I'm asking for the index of 2, and that's saying, what power did I have to raise 3 to to get 2? And there it is. I had to raise 3 to the second power to get 2. Now I'm doing the index of 3. What power did I have to raise 3 to to get 3? Well, 3 to the 1 is 3, so the index of 3 is 1. And then 4 is here. What power did I have to raise 3 to to get 4? The power is 4 as well. What power did I have to raise 3 to to get 5? Well, here's my 5. And I had to raise 3 to the fifth power to get 5. What power did I have to raise 3 to to get 6? And there it is. 3 cubed gave us 6. Next example, using 5 as a primitive root for mod 7, we obtain a different set of indices. So I want you to pause the video, raise 5 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 power, mod 7, reduce, and fill in the table. And then we'll go over it. Okay, so 5 to the 1st is 5, mod 7, 5 to the 2nd is 25, which reduces to 4, mod 7, 5 cubed is 5 times 5 squared, or 20, which reduces to 6, mod 7, 5 to the 4th is 5 times 5 cubed, or 30, and 30 reduces to 2, mod 7, since 7 goes into 28. 5 to the 5th, it's a big number, or it's 5 times 5 to the 4th, so 5 times the 2 is 10, mod 7. And we reduce that to 
3, mod 7, and 5 to the 6 is congruent to 5 times 5 to the 5th, or 15, which is, again, reducing to 1, mod 7. So now we're going to fill in the table. We want to find the index of 1, first of all, with root 5. What power did I have to raise 5 to to get 1? And that was 5 to the 6th. What power did I have to raise 5 to to get 2? There's my 2. I raised it to the 4th power. What power did I raise 5 to to get 3? There's my 3. And I raised it to the 5th power. There's my 3. And I raised it to the 5th power. What power did I raise 4? What power did I raise 5 to to get 4? And here's my 4, and it was 5 squared. What power did I raise 5 to to get 5? Well, that was 1. What power did I raise 5 to to get 6? There's my 6. Here it is. So that was 5 cubed. So we filled in the table of indices. Now we have some properties of indices. So I'd like you to pause the video and read these properties. These properties should look familiar if you remember the properties of logarithms because indices are discrete logarithms. So the first property is that the index of 1 mod r for any root r is going to be equal to 0. Right? What power do I raise? r2 to get 1. Well, r to the 0 power is going to be 1, no matter what the root is. And the index of a times b, right? When we multiply, we add exponents. So that's the index of a plus the index of b. And notice the mod is phi of m for this theorem. And the index of a to the k is equal to k times the index of a mod phi of m, right? A power to a power you multiply. So we can bring the k down in front and multiply times the index of a for k positive integer. Now let's take a look at how these properties of indices and a table of indices can help us solve a congruence. So the congruence we want to solve is 5x to the 11th is congruent to 12 mod 17. The first thing we're going to do to solve this problem is take the index of both sides of the congruence. With primitive root 3, since that's the table I've got. And it becomes mod 16. The theorem said when you take the index, the mod becomes phi of the original mod. So now we're going to use the properties of indices. This is the index of 5 plus the index of x to the 11th. The index of a product is the sum of the indices. is congruent to the index of 12, and we can look that up in the table. The index of 12 is 13, mod 16. Now we can look up the index of 5. The index of 5 was 5. So I've got 5 plus 11 times the index of x is congruent to 13 mod 16. Right, I brought the power down using the property of indices. Next thing I'm going to do is subtract 5 from both sides. So 11 index of x is congruent to 8 mod 16. The next thing we want to do is find the inverse of 11 mod 16 as we've done before to get rid of that coefficient. And since we know that 33 is congruent to 1 mod 16 and it's 3 times 11, we're going to multiply both sides of the congruence by 3. So the index of x is 24, which reduces to 8 mod 16. And then the last step to solve the problem and figure out what x is, if we know the index of 8 the index of x is 8. We look for 8 in the second row 
of our table above. And if the index of x is 8, that means that x is congruent to 16. And now it's mod 17. And we've looked the value up in the table and moved up. We return to the original mod 17. We've got one more example to solve. 6x to the 12th congruent to 11 mod 17. So first step, take the index of both sides with root 3. mod phi of 17 or 16. Then we're going to use the properties of indices to simplify. So we get the index of 6 plus the index of x to the 12th. The index of a product is the sum of the indices. And the index of 11, we can look up. The index of 11 is 7. The index of 6, we can look up. So we're looking for the 6 in the top row. We get 15. Here we've got 12 index of x, congruent to 7, mod 16. Then we're going to subtract 15 from both sides. So 7 minus 15 is negative 8. mod 16. We want to get rid of that negative number, so we're going to add 16, and it turns into positive 8. Then we need to find the inverse of 12 mod 16. Okay, we got a little bit of a problem here. Why do we have a problem? Because 12 doesn't have an inverse mod 16. Remember, if the two numbers weren't relatively prime, then there is no inverse. But okay, what can we do? Well, we've got a greatest common divisor between all three of those values, right? Four goes into each one of them. So we're going to write that as 3 index of x is congruent to 2 mod 4. If that step is confusing you, review the video on linear congruences with multiple solutions. So now what are we going to do? We want to find the inverse of 3, mod 4, and 3 is the same as negative 1, so I know it's its own inverse, so I'm going to multiply by 3 on both sides and get 6, mod 4. So we have the index of x is congruent to 2, mod 4, since 6 reduces to 2. And then recall that since we divided through by 4, there are going to be 4 solutions, mod 16. So the index of x is going to be 2, or 2 plus 4, or 6, plus 4 again, plus 4 again, 14. So those are the 4 different solutions, mod 16. And then the last thing we're going to do is look up those index values in the table above and see what the values of x are. So if the index of x is 2, x is 9. If the index of x is 6, x is 15. If the index of x is 10, x is 8. And if the index of x is 14, x is 2. And that's mod 17. So those are the four solutions, mod 17. And remember, you can always check your answers. If you plug those values into the original congruence, it should make it a true statement. So I hope that helps, and have a great day.